Hello lovely people. How are you today? Are you good? Lovely. I'm sitting in a chair. If you don't like it, kill me. I don't care. Do you even lift? Last month was February. This month is March. I'm going to tell you the books I read in February. I read five books in February. Three of those books were from the library. <gasps> How could I? How dare I use the library? No, it's fine. Which means it, I, won't, I won't have the physical copy of them in this video because, you know, I'm a normal person and I return my books on time. But I do own two of the books, so yeah. The first book I read this month was The Stepford Wives by Ira Levin, which you can see here. According to my Goodreads, I gave this 4 out of 5. And it was 4 out of 5. It's basically about this woman and her husband and her children move into this new area, this new suburb in, in somewhere in America called Stepford. And she notices there's something really weird about the wives, right? They're all perfect. They do everything perfectly. They don't complain about anything. And all the husbands go along to this husband's club, basically, in which they talk about, you know, stuff. And, you know, she, something's going on with the wives of Stepford and something's very odd. So, you know, there's a mystery. It's quite good. It's very culty. It's very classic. You've probably heard that, you know, oh, she's like a Stepford wife, you know. She's a bit too perfect. Something must be up. And something is up. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, it was written in the 70s. Cult classic. It was really scary when it came out at the time because, you know, people scared easily back then, I think. Not really. But, yeah, it's really good. Should read it. Mm -hmm. The next book I read was The Death of Ivan Ilyich by Leo Tolstoy. Yes, Leo Tolstoy. He wrote a novella. How nice of him. It's much easier than trudging through war and peace around a Corinne in it. <gasps> yes, so it's basically about this guy called Ivan Ilyich and he's dying. Shock horror. The first half of the book is basically kind of like a, a biography of his life. Kind of. Rough biography of his life. Why can I not speak? Rough biography of his life. The second half of the book is basically him lying on a chair going, Oh God, I'm dying. Damn it. I'm dying for God's sake. I'm Russian. I'm dying. I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I'm a person who works in a court and I'm dying. On Goodreads, I give it a 5 out of 5. Because it's great. It's really good. It, it is a person just basically saying, Oh, I'm dying. Oh, I'm dying. Oh, there's pain on my side. Oh, I'm dying. But yeah, it's really good. You know, if you want to try some Russian literature, try that. It's... how many pages? It doesn't say it, does it? No. But it's good. It's really good. The next book I actually have a physical copy of. The Old Man and the Sea by Ernest Hemingway. <gasps> Hemingway. I've gone into the, the, the depths of Hemingway land. Also, this is like... this is tiny. It is less than 100 pages. I think it's actually 99. Man can't fish, boy leaves, man goes out one day, sees a fish, is happy. Basically, yeah, the start is good, the ending is good, the middle is, uh, it's kind of stuck in the doldrums, literally stuck in the doldrums. I'm scared to say this, Hemingway's a bit boring, isn't he? He is a bit boring. Yeah, it's okay. On Goodreads, I gave it 4 out of 5. So, you know, good, good, eh, it's eh, eh. The next book I read, I also have here, and it's quite a monster. The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak. Yes, The Book Thief. On Goodreads, I gave it 5 out of 5 because it's really good. It's really good. It's, it's, it's the war, it's the Second World War, and we're in Germany. Oh look, German point of view. <gasps> Narrated by death. <gasps> it's about a little girl named Liesel. I mean, how German can you get? Look, it has a silver P on the cover. It means it's good. Look, see, look, oh. Hear that, hear that. That's the sound of excellence. Girl lives in Nazi Germany. She steals books. She lives with this man and this woman. And there's a Jew in the basement. 
It's like an episode of The Cosby Show. Yes, but I've, I've heard a lot of people have cried at this, especially near the ending and near the beginning and the middle. And in fact, I think people have just cried at every single page. But I didn't. I know. I'm not, I'm not trying to be like, ooh, I don't cry at novels. I'm such a macho, macho man. But no. I, 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 it's very hard for me to cry at something that isn't real. I.e. books or films or whatnot. So yeah. It's really good. Read it. The last book I read this month was The Diving Bell and the Butterfly by Jean-Dominique Bobby. You can see the cover here. It is about a man. This is, it's true, it's a biography, an autobiography. It is about the French editor of Elle. His name is Jean-Dominique Bobby. And he has a massive stroke. And he is locked into his body, locked in syndrome. And he dictates the novel by blinking his left eyelid. And you thought getting up in the morning was hard. Some people have put this novel down for being uh, pretentious and whatnot. People are like, ooh, he's the French editor of Elle, he's so up his own ass. Ooh, la 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 la. Yeah, there are some bits in it. I mean, I remember the line distinctly. If I am to drool, why may as well drool on cashmere? I mean, yes, why not? He's allowed to drool on cashmere. He can't physically use his saliva ducts. Are they real? I don't do science. Please tell me saliva ducts are real. It's very short, as you can imagine. He dictated with his eyelid and he's not exactly going to write Ulysses. Who reads? I gave it 5 out of 5. Because it is 5 out of 5. It's a good story. It's kind of... Not really chapters. It, uh, it's more vignettes from his life leading up to the accident. And it was made into a movie. I mean, a French film about disability. That has never been done before. <laughs> That's a film joke. The French only make films about disability. Just like how the English make it about the working class and the Irish about potatoes and left feet and guards. Yeah. There are the books I read this month. All five. Reviewed. Well, not really reviewed. More looked over. Yeah. I read over a thousand pages this month. Woo. That is five books towards my challenge of 20 books this year. I know 20 books, too, so some people are like, 20 books, read that in my sleep, upside down, in a cave at night. But no, obviously, for me, I'm a slow reader. Well, I'm trying to learn how to speed read. Speed read. So yeah, that's why I'm kind of reading novellas and whatnot, with massive, massive fonts. Can you see that? You probably can't. But that font is massive. It's not like, what? what's, what's that book? Oh my God. Uh, Oh look, oh, oh, there goes everything. War and Peace. This literally has the smallest font I've ever seen in my life. Let me focus this in. Look at that. Look at that. That's ridiculous. That is, that's ridiculous. Oh, and, and all my lights suddenly seem to work now when the video has ended. Damn you, electricity. Do you know what's really annoying? Going to see Lim is and singing everything. If I sing one day more, one more time, I will build a barricade and tell the police to just go away because we're greater than everyone. Lim is, that's a good movie. You should go see that. Do you know what else is good? Lincoln and Zero Dark Thirty and With Snail and I. Uh, what else do I have over there that's good? What's good? What's good? Kays is good. Clerks is good. Um, what else is good? Da 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 da. Macbeth, Roman Polanski version. Ah, uh, what else is good? Do I have anything good? Summer High Tie. Have you seen that series? You should watch that series. Do you know what's not good? The Hangover. That's an awful film. Do you know what else? Do you know what else isn't good? Anchorman. Maybe it's my sense of humour. I didn't laugh once. No, actually, I laughed when he kicked the dog off the bridge. That was it. I'm going to end on that note. Goodbye, lovely people.